welcome to the first lecture of the uh, online course non traditional abrasive machining processes ultrasonic abrasive jet and abrasive water jet machining my name is e roy choudhury and i am a professor in the mechanical engineering department of iit kharagpur so basically we are going to discuss about the non traditional abrasive processes machining processes which have gained popularity over the last few decades and we find the uh, you know the, the rise of i mean the development of ultrasonic machining abrasive jet machining and abrasive water jet machining in these cases instead of the conventional machining practice we find the use of non conventional or non traditional methods of removing material so first let us have a quick look what is exactly non traditional uh, sorry what is exactly conventional machining practice machining uh, essentially means that we are uh, obtaining a particular shape from a blank by the removal of material in the form of chips so it's a subtractive process and what are the essential features of conventional machining we have basically a sharp tool in the form of a wedge okay a triangular element so that it has a sharp point it can apply uh, sufficient pressure through that particular point and the work piece which it is going to shape that work piece uh, that i mean the tool is sufficiently harder than the work piece so that it can indent penetrate the work piece the tool and the work piece are held rigidly because typically the forces which arise in their interaction can be in hundreds of newtons so the tool is embedded into the work piece up to a particular depth by penetration it has a sharp point so it penetrates into the work piece and after that a relative motion might be pr provided to the tool with respect to the work piece so that material will get removed in the form of chips so let's have a pictorial view of this particular uh, phenomenon the triangular portion as it is written it's the tool it is embedded into the work piece and after that a relative motion has been provided so that we can see that from the work piece some material is getting removed and that particular material which is getting removed it's called a chip generally material gets material fails by shear so that uh, it it's finally it's removed this relative motion is sometimes uh, referred to as cutting speed the depth up to which the tool is uh, embedded that might be the depth of cut or the uncut chip thickness and after this material has been removed from one side to the other the tool might be shifting uh, sideways which is called the feed motion okay so this is conventional way of removing material the tool has to be harder than the work piece it has to have a sharp edge it has to have a well defined geometry and all these things might become very difficult to maintain in very you know stringent situations so compared to conventional machining why would we at all go for non traditional or non conventional machining so for that matter in many cases of conventional machining we find that the part might be very hard the work piece material might be very hard and brittle and if we try to machine it it will be fracturing so if it fractures we will find that the blank is spoiled and the work piece cannot ultimately be made from that and secondly 
apart from this the machining of complex geometrical features might not be possible by conventional means. Okay. The, so, uh, the particular feature which has to be produced it is so complex it cannot be made or if it can be made it becomes very expensive. I mean very specific tools part specific tools has to be made and this will be costing money and so it will become physically uh, you know not not very the process will not be con conventional process will not be very competitive in the market. Apart from that the work piece material might be heat sensitive or too delicate that means it cannot uh, withstand much force etcetera. So, in these cases also conventional machining might not be the most popular or the uh, you know the, the best or the most appropriate uh, process. Further we might be working in a size range where conventional machining might not be possible. For example, you might have a drill of diameter I mean uh, basically a twist drill uh, of say high speed steel uh, of the diameter say 0.4 millimeters, but if I say that no I want still uh, lower than that with a high L by D ratio then you have a problem. Then we perhaps cannot uh, go for conventional means of uh, drilling a hole and we have to find out some non-conventional method. So, there are so many uh, cases in which we will find that no conventional method of machining is definitely not the most appropriate or it is in fact in impossible or it is too expensive something like that. So, if we are talking of abrasive based non-traditional methods of machining how is machining going to take place that means how is material removed in those cases. Here what we have shown is an abrasive grit or sometimes it is known as an abrasive particle that means we have we are seeing it in magnified view when if this abrasive particle is you know accelerated to a very high speed and made to Im Im impact against a brittle work material it might be able to remove material in the form of chips. I mean not in the form of chips in, in the form of debris which comes out of this impact it is frequently known as impact erosion. So, simply in plain and simple words it means that you have a hard object you throw it basically uh, to, to impact against a, a brittle hard brittle object the second one might be you know uh, taking up some damage that is all. So, damaging a hard brittle material by impacts. So, why does the abrasive itself have to be hard? It has to be hard because first of all if it is not hard it will itself deform and take away part of the energy which is contained in it as kinetic energy in this case. Secondly if it is you know it has to be very rigid and hard and if it if it takes up fracture itself we cannot fully avoid that, but if it if it fractures very easily the problem is then also it will be taking up part of the energy with which it has to be it, it has been you know projected towards the work piece. So, hard you know uh, objects I mean hard material particles are generally chosen as abrasive particles. Another way in which the abrasive particles might be utilized to remove material from the work piece is by percussion or basically in, in simple words by hammering. We have shown here pictorially a sledge hammer being you know used to create impacts on the work piece not directly say the sledge hammer is made of some steel. Uh, you know hammering uh, head. So, the hammer head is made of steel, but it does not impact the work piece directly a very hard abrasive grit is placed in between. So, that the impacts of the hammer are on the abrasive and this abrasive in turn impacts the body. So, that material gets removed from that. So, let us have a quick look at the non-traditional abrasive machining methods which are existing and which are in use today 
uh, okay, in laboratories, in com uh, commercially available, etcetera. Ultrasonic machining, as the name implies, there is some vibration involved. How is this vibration made use of? This body, which is called the horn, okay, this elongated or tapered body, this you know vibrates in this direction at ultrasonic frequencies that means say around 19 to maybe 25 kilohertz and by virtue of this particular vibration it hammers against this particular workpiece with abrasive particles in between so that that percussion method of material removal takes place and the conjugate profile of the tool this last portion is the tool. So, horn, tool, workpiece with abrasives in between. So, the abrasives in between they give rise to material removal by impact erosion through percussion. Okay. The abrasives are generally contained in, a, in, or in water, so that they can be transferred from one place to another very easily and that is called an abrasive slurry. For, for dearth of space, we have not shown that in detail. Uh, ultrasonic uh, method of machining can also be you know uh, applied through a rotary tool, which might be having diamond particles impregnated on its you know end. So, that the, that rotating tool can remove material just like milling and it becomes very versatile. So, in another way, instead of making use of percussion method of material removal, we can also have this free impact. Okay. Free impact means that the abrasives are accelerated through a particular speed and with this speed they hit the workpiece and come out causing some damage to the workpiece. Here we have shown that okay, this part has got damaged, that means material has got removed here due to those impacts. So, abrasive jet machining makes use of a carrier medium as a gas. Okay. It might be plain and simple air, it can be argon, all sorts of materials can be used and generally the speed range here is around 150 to 300 meters per second, 150 to 300 meters per second. What is the speed range for ultrasonic machining? It is around 10 meters per second. Okay. So, there is a, so there is a definite speed difference between the particles of ultrasonic machining and the particles of abrasive jet machining. So, if gas can carry these particles, we might have uh, might make use of some liquids which can carry these particles and accelerate them, them to a, an even higher speed. So, that is abrasive water jet machining, where water can be accelerated to a speed I mean it can be confined in a pressurized chamber, so that on release from that confinement water can be accelerated to speeds of say 1000 meters per second. So, 1 kilometer in 1 second, this water when mixed with abrasives, its, its speed will come down uh, slightly say 800 meters per second. So, 800, 900 meters per second of speed is attained by these abrasives and they can be made to impact against a workpiece surface, so that practically any material can be removed by that high speed abrasive jet carried in a water medium. Okay. While, while USM and AJM are most suitable for machining hard and brittle electrically non-conductive materials. Abrasive water jet machining can practically machine all materials, any material. It is the, the speed to which the abrasive particles are accelerated 1000 meters per second or near value that makes it possible to machine any material. But why is ultrasonic machining and abrasive jet machining you know confined to the machining of hard and brittle materials which are electrically non-conductive? That is because if they are electrically conductive, there are better you know options. For example, electrical discharge machining 
or electrochemical machining might be employed instead of USM and EJM. Why so? Because, because USM and EJM ultimately they are relying upon the hardness of the abrasives being, hi being higher than the hardness of the work material. But in EDM and ECM, there is no such restriction. The material removal rate can also be higher because ultrasonic and uh, ultrasonic machining and abrasive jet machining, the machining rate is uh, lower. So, they have their own area of application. If it is a ceramic or a glass material, you will find that we cannot carry out EDM on it, we cannot carry out ECM on it. Why? Because they are electrically not conductive. So, in that case, you will find USM and EGM perhaps will be the you know most appropriate uh, options. So, ha they have a well defined area of application. Not so for abrasive water jet machining as mentioned before, they can pract machine practically all materials and the added advantage of abrasive water jet machining over conventional methods of machining is that the cut materials are free from heat affected zones. Since you are using a medium of water, it has a high cooling capacity. So, it keeps the temperature range within you know limits, so that there is no burning effect, there is no you know high temperature damage, there is no phase change, there is no uh, burning if oxygen is present like that. So, we might think of this that okay, if EDM is there and if the workpiece is made, uh, uh, electrically conductive, I do not have to bother about USM and AGM. If ECM is there, so same thing, but actually it is not so. Why? Because every process has its characteristic drawback also. For example, suppose we are going for EDM, what are the possible problems that we are going to meet? EDM will definitely produce a recast layer, which means you will find some material which has been melted and removed from the workpiece surface that will come and get solid re-solidified. That means, it will get deposited on the finished surface. So, just imagine you have a finished surface on top of that in, in, in drop, uh, droplets of recast material will be covering the finished surface and if you look at it under the microscope, you will find a lot of uh, cracks and deposited material totally you know covering the finished surface. And this way, material transfer can, can also take place from the cutting element to the workpiece. What does this mean? Suppose you are using a copper tool or a brass wire to cut material from the uh, workpiece in case of electrical discharge machining or wire cut electrical discharge machining. If you look at it under the microscope, the surface will reveal that lot of material from the tool has got deposited on the workpiece. So, that means that EDM also has its disadvantages. So, it is not you know absolute the, the supreme method to be used if material is conductive. If you have you know problems with recast material, if you have problems with surface cracks, heat affected zones material transfer from the tool, then in those cases if the workpiece material is uh, you know hard and brittle, EGM and USM might be providing you with better alternatives. What about lasers? Lasers seem to be you know the ultimate solution to all engineering problems that are connected with manufacturing. However, if if laser cuts are you know examined critically, then many materials will be producing clinging dross. Clinging dross, what does it mean? It means that on the underside of the cut, material which is re-solidified from the cut material will be clinging or hanging on to the cut 
and producing a totally unusable uh, piece of uh, final product. It cannot be used, either some secondary process has to be carried out to remove that shilling, uh, clinging dross or you know some, uh, some precautions have to be taken, so that clinging dross does not occur in the first place. For example, like tandem cutting. So, lasers also suffer from laser cut surfaces also suffer from striations that means, you know uh, parallel marks creating a rough texture on the surface cut surface of you know laser cut materials. The cut might be tapered and of course, there are thermal effects. So, that means that non traditional abrasive machining methods are also competitive in this world of you know production of machined surfaces. It is not that they are absolutely unusable if the material is conductive or if other methods are available. So, where do we apply these non traditional abrasive processes? As a generalization, we can say that machining of two dimensional and three dimensional profiles. If you want to make some you know die surface and if it is very brittle material or very hard material, in that case if you, you know, want to employ uh, say um, contour milling using cutters, you might be incurring so much cost of tooling that it might prove to be uneconomic. So, in that case USM might be uh, providing you with a better alternative. However, we should note that USM also results in high tool wear. Okay, tool wear is high since abrasives are used and the tool is getting uh, you know, constant impacts just like the workpiece is getting them. So, in that case we have high tool wear in USM also. Abrasive processes like abrasive water jet machining etcetera can be employed in laminated object manufacturing, profile edge lamination tooling etcetera. That means, wherever you have to cut out a material from a plate like uh, structure or a sheet etcetera with the help of a cutter and 5 axis water jet machines are now available which can cut you know. Uh, bevel edges to a particular material. Machining of grooves can be done by say abrasive jet machining, abrasive water jet machining and also by ultrasonic machining. Cutting of sheets and place, plates, rock cutting, okay, rocks, cutting of rocks can be done by abrasive water jet machining, drilling of circular and non circular holes machining of heat sensitive materials thin fragile. Okay. So, these things we have already discussed and I think you have got a fair idea of what are the materials, what are the applications that are you know can be done by these processes. So, let us see the scope as we have discussed since our civilization is still heavily dependent upon metals that is why ultrasonic machining and abrasive jet machining have not gained the amount of popularity that has been gained by electrical discharge machining and wire cut electrical discharge machining. Not even ECM that means, electrical uh, electrochemical machining. Why is this so? This is because while electrical discharge machining uh, can only take place for a you know definite gap between the tool and the workpiece beyond this gap. That means, if you increase this gap then electrical discharge machining is not going to take place. So, this is a sort of you know safety catch. In electrical uh, electrochemical machining however, whatever be the distance some amount of material removal will de definitely take place by electrolytic dissolution. So, that means, electrical discharge machining ensures that wherever you do not want the material to be removed in case of you know in case of uh, larger gaps existing 
material will not get removed in those places. And you will be sure that yes, I have not removed any material from those places. In electrochemical machining, if you provide a pathway to you know passage of charges from one side to the other, material will get removed in those cases. That is why electrochemical machining is not as popular as electrical discharge machining. And for the same reason that um, you know mainly we have metals in our industry to be processed to be manufactured metal based jobs. That is why EDM and wire cut EDM they are much more popular than USM and AJM. But there are some areas in which you know material uh, uh, machining is still done by our abrasive based processes. Hybrid processes have been evolved and abrasive water jet machining that way is unique that it does not affect the material properties and can practically machine all materials. So, why cannot we apply conventional methods of machining for glasses, ceramics and semiconductors that we are claiming is to be the niche area of uh, abrasive processes. This is because glasses and ceramics will fracture if we try to machine them by conventional means. But if we use non traditional abrasive machining then also they will fracture and crack, but the catch is that we use abrasive powder or particles of very small size. How much small size say uh, 25 to 50 microns or even less than that. What is the advantage? The cracks and the fractures will which occur due to you know due to the use of such powder they will also be restricted to that size range. So, that ultimately the surface which is produced it will be a smooth surface and material removal will take place and the surface geometry will be acceptable. The fractures which are taking place they will all you know cumulatively they will disappear as a whole. The surface to the you know for all practical purposes will be usable. And as regards the dynamics of such machining methods the cutting forces are minimal. So, delicate parts can be easily machined by these methods. So, and also if the abrasive grids can be confined in a chamber and they are not permitted to come in contact with atmosphere, this can be considered to be an environment friendly process. Some of the hybrid processes which are in use, they are electrical discharge grinding, though this the uh, use of abrasives is in a conventional way that is by grinding which is conventional electrochemical grinding this also is you know hybrid between electrochemical machining and conventional grinding. We can also have electrochemical aided abrasive flow machining in which you know uh, inside geometries like hole geometry and other inside hollow geometries machining can be done for finishing purpose. So, by electrochemical means with abrasives put inside. In the same way chemically assisted ultrasonic vibration that can also be employed to remove material. These are all hybrid processes. For example, say hydrofluoric acid might be used which chemically can remove material from ceramics, glasses etcetera and that will enhance the performance or the material removal rate capability of ultrasonic vibration. So, I will end the lecture with you know uh, a look forward towards the analysis that we are going to perform for abrasive machining. So, here I have shown an abrasive grid of a perfectly spherical shape which is having a diameter small d and which is indenting into a work piece with a depth of indentation to be delta. 
due to the indentation there will definitely be forces arising between abrasive grit and the work piece, but we are assuming that the abrasive does not you know lose its shape, it retains its perfectly spherical shape, but the work piece being plastically deformable it, it suffers this indentation delta. And due to this indentation if the work piece is brittle uh, it will undergo material removal equal to the, the volume of the hemisphere having diameter big D. So, in a in, in by dotted line we have shown the material which is getting removed from the uh, you know work piece surface in the form of a hemispherical chunk. So, the basic assumption is if the material be brittle this hemispherical volume is our material removal per impact per impact. Okay. So, next time uh, that we uh, meet again we are going to discuss about uh, you know analysis of uh, the material removal mechanism and we will try to derive an expression for material removal in case of uh, ultrasonic machining. Thank you very much.